Christmas is over, the year is coming to an end and you might be thinking about making new projects next year. Well, I got something for you because we are talking about temperature blankets today. First, a big welcome again for being here. Welcome back or welcome if you're new here. I am Femme. I make knitting and crochet related videos on this channel. I also talk mental health. You can expect videos with patterns, um, podcasts. I do podcasts every other week and, and much more. So if you're interested, in follow me here. Give me a little like, subscribe and you can see more in the future. Today, I'm going to take you along in the world of temperature blankets. So what it is, how to make it, what kind of yarn to use, uh, what colors and all kinds of patterns that I will share with you in the end. So stick along for that. Today we are indeed talking about temperature blankets. I'll pop some up here if you have no idea what I'm talking about. A temperature blanket is a big blanket that you work on a whole year. Uh, the idea is that you make one row for every day and that day that describes the temperature that it was that day. Some people do the highest and lowest temperature, some people do the average temperature. There are many different things that you could do, um, but that is the basic thing of a temperature blanket. Now you might ask, why would I make a temperature blanket? Well, it could be really fun to have an overview of a specific year uh, of what the weather was and I don't know it's just nostalgic I think for later what people also tend to do is not make it for the year that we're in but for a previous year so your birth year for example that would be 97 for me so I could look up online what the temperature was every single day in 1997 in where I lived at that moment where I was born grown up um, and I could make a blanket so it would be very personal very fun you could make a baby blanket version for someone uh, that maybe uh, has a, a little baby or a child that turned one. Um, you could also do a wedding year, uh, a big anniversary year, all kinds of different things is what you could do with this. But you could do it for any year, but I'm going to talk mostly about the year that you're in, so that is how I will focus this video. Now that you know what a temperature blanket is and uh, for what kind of years or what kind of things you could make it, let's go into yarn and colors. So for yarn, you can choose any yarn that you like, of course, but I have some recommendations. I would not use cotton because it will be a very heavy blanket. Uh, acrylic would be a good choice because it is affordable, um, especially when you are going to go for acrylic from a big commercial brand that it will have the color all year round. They won't discontinue it. You can never be 100% sure, but uh, you want to have it in stock if you need some more. Uh, you can use fingering weight sock yarn if you have a lot laying around, but again, I think it would be nice to have something affordable, you know that you can buy it later in the year, uh, the colors won't discontinue, and uh, I won't use a very thick yarn, but also not a super thin yarn, so maybe DK weight is perfect. The reason that you don't want to use a very thick yarn is because your blanket will also be a lot heavier and maybe too big, so because you're making 365 rows, um, it needs to be in proportion, of course. Then let's go into colors, because this is a part where you can be very creative, and I will tell you why. So if you have seen the traditional temperature blanket, it is most of the time a rainbow kind of blanket. So you will go from red, from warm colors to cool colors, so from red to purple, Red resonates with the warmer weather, uh, purple blue will resonate with colder weather. You could definitely do it like this, it will be very fun, a little bit of a funky blanket. However, I can imagine that maybe your style is different. I personally uh, would like to have some more neutrals or maybe pastels is also very possible. Uh, maybe shades of blue and green, because the, <laughs> I really love blue and green if you know by now. So you can really play around. You can do it a traditional way, but don't, you know that you don't have to. You can try to look what you really like one of the reasons why i'm saying this is because it is such a big project you're working on it for a year you want to love it so if you make something in a color that you think okay but this is how it needs to be done because people do it like this i need to do it like this too and eventually you don't like what you made that would just be a waste of your time and yarn if you really love to make it of course that is perfect perfectly fine maybe you want to gift it also perfectly fine but I can imagine that you really want to use it around your house. Um, so pick colors that you really, really like. I was also thinking about using scrap yarn and I have some opinions about it uh, as why I think it could work, but maybe it might not be the best decision. 
um, it will be a nice D stash of course but you really need to have a lot of the scrap yard laying around so it's not really scraps anymore it's more like uh, skeins that you maybe not use so for example I have quite a lot of acrylic still in my stash from when I began um, in the beginning and uh, I don't really don't love to use it anymore but it will be perfect for a blanket so if you have for example there will be quite a lot but if you have like nine different colors maybe two skeins three skeins each use it for this I don't know why you would have so many maybe from the same you didn't use but it could be possible so um scraps could work but you do need to have uh, enough already or be able to buy more of it so when you use maybe for example hand dyed yarn it will be a little bit more difficult because you will need quite a lot you'll need the same skein again um, look into your own stash if it's possible it really depends on your stash and what you like now that we talked about yarn and colors, let's go into making it because I have some tips. Organization is key in this project. You are going to work on it for a whole year. You don't want to forget certain things. You don't want to uh, lose track. Uh, you can fall behind, which is totally okay. I don't expect you, or I, if I would even do it, I don't expect myself at all to work on it daily. So I have some tips on how to stay organized during this project. What I would recommend is to keep a notebook by your side or something. Maybe you want to do it on an iPad or a laptop. I think paper would be nice because you can grab it, you know, very quickly. But keep a notebook by your side while working on this project. And I have some tips on what you can keep track of. So, first things first. Uh, what I would recommend you to write. I'm going to write it here for you. I would recommend to start with the project name. So, for example, if I would do a temperature blanket for my birth year, I would make a temperature blanket 1997. Or if you would make it for this year, temperature blanket 2023. So just first put in the name of the project. Then I would recommend, highly recommend actually, to put down your needle size. I don't know about you, but if I crochet, I always immediately forget what kind of needle size I was working with. If you want to do a knitted version, put down your needle size too. If you work with interchangeables, uh, you probably will use them for another project at the same time. So you'll screw them off and forget. So put down your needle size. Next, you want to put down the days. So begin with a month. Uh, start with January 1 till, what is it, 30? I have no idea what the end of January is, but the whole month. And for every day, you're going to write down the temperature of that day. So uh, I said there are two ways to do it. People, uh, There are people who only put the average temperature and people who put the lowest and the highest. So choose what you want to do. Um, put that temperature in every single day or maybe look after a week in your weather app or something else. Some, uh, there are many websites where you can find the temperatures of the days. Also for when you do it back in the day, make sure that you can find it for back in the day before you start. Uh, but put that down. Then every single day that you work on your blanket, uh, you are going to cross off the day that you just made. So if you have worked three rows, January 1st, 2nd and 3rd, you're going to mark it done. So you don't forget where you are. In the beginning, it will be easy to find where you are. You can really easily count your rows. But if you are at day 135, for example, you don't want to count anymore. So just mark them when they're done so you know exactly where you are. Then there's another way to organize your yarn that you're going to be using. What a lot of people like to use is these kind of charts. So you see a few examples here. These are really handy and they also look fun. So why not make them? What you can do here, as you see, you can write down the temperature that resonates with a certain color that you chose. And it makes it really easy to find back on which color you have to work that day. So for example, when it's like summer, it's 30 plus degrees and you have chosen hot pink for 30 plus degrees you can really easily see it find it and uh, pick the yarn and make your row i recommend to do this on some sturdy paper so maybe some cardboard that you have laying around or uh, if you don't have it you could also maybe uh, write it down uh, but it will be easier i think when you have like really the the yarns that you can put in there uh, so that's what i would recommend then before you go into the patterns i have a few tips that i already talked about a little bit um, for staying motivated for doing this project all year round. First things is pick colors and a pattern that you really, really enjoy. If you are really a fan of very simple single crochet crocheting, 
just pick a moss stitch pattern or such a simple pattern which is totally fine but if that is something that you might not find interesting enough you know yourself a little bit you know what you like what you prefer maybe pick a more interesting pattern i have really a few fun patterns in this end of this video uh, i also have some more linked below and you really have something to choose from same goes for colors i already talked about it but really pick colors that you love if you uh, personally i don't love the color red or yellow i probably would not enjoy working with those colors so keep that in mind when you pick your colors and i think this is one of the most important things to say don't pressure yourself too much uh, this is a year-long project it is you don't have to work on it every day i understand you want to have it finished but if it's not working out or if you want to take a little break do it because if you're going to push on months and months and you don't enjoy it, you're not going to love the end product, probably. Because if you look at it, you will feel the stress of working on it. So keep this in mind. It is okay. If you don't finish it, it is okay. You can always finish it later. If you have a little bit of a break, it's okay. You can catch up. Don't pressure yourself too much. What you could also do if you know that you definitely don't want to work on it daily, which I also would not recommend, is work on it maybe weekly, make a little moment for it. So you have seven rows to do, you can calculate a little bit how long one row takes you, maybe do it once every two weeks, once every month. I think a month will be a little bit long, but I think once every one, every week or once every two weeks would maybe be a very good thing to do. Plan it in, take a little moment. Put on some movie and get a little cup of tea or something else, what you prefer. And yeah, make it a really moment for yourself to work on your own very personal project. Now let's get into the patterns. I really have some fun ones to show you and I want to give you some options if you want to start 2023. Uh, if you don't uh, start on the first, it's okay. Again, don't pressure yourself too much, okay? Okay? Yes. Thank you. First things first, we start off with a simple must stitch pattern. As I said, this is something that you see a lot, a moss stitch, it's a single crochet with a chain and you'll eventually uh, crochet into the chains, gaps, case, chain spaces, yeah, you understand what I mean if you know what a moss stitch is. Otherwise, look it up, it's really simple, there are a lot of videos online. This one is so fun and colorful, this one is by, I'm looking down to see the name, uh, Nathalie, yeah, Nathalie uh, Buffard, I hope I say it correctly. Before. Uh, this, uh, I really love the colors that she uses. It is so different than the normal standard one, but it also, I don't know, it also kind of looks like a standard one. I really think it's very fun. You can really say she chose colors that fit for her. They are a little bit softer, a little bit moodier. Uh, yeah, a very good simple pattern if you really enjoy just a simple crochet stitch. Okay, we're going to change it up immediately already because this one is. As the other one was super simple, this one is uh, very funky and very fun, I think. It is also Tunisian Crochet. This is the Chevron Tunisian Crochet Temperature Blanket by Amy Minard. And oh, this is one that I really, really thought I want to share with you because I think it's beautiful. I think it's versatile enough that it will keep you engaged through making it. And uh, it's Tunisian Crochet, so if you haven't done that or want to try it, this is your chance. Here you can also see that the colors are different than the standard ones. So I hope that this gives you some more inspiration too. Then another chevron blanket, but this one is made with regular crochet. And uh, I really like the, what is it? Is it variegated yarn? I really like the kind of yarn that she chooses. This is the Crochet Kim Birth Temperature Blanket by Kim Guzman. Um, also so fun, uh, different kinds of colors that I think could be really interesting. Keep it engaging for you, really make it to your own taste. And uh, another really good contestant for your list. This blanket is by the way made with DK weight. It is free for download and it uses a five millimeter hook. This is kind of regular what you see, so that's interesting to keep in mind. I really want to show you some very different kinds of blankets. So that is why I also have this one for you. This is the Elas Temperature Blanket by Kay Adolfson. Um, again, very different. So there are really a lot of choices that you can make. This is another free pattern for download on Ravelry. Everything is linked down below as usual, by the way. So you can find them all there. Um, again, you can change the colors up so much. You can really play with them. She uses a main color, white in this case. You can also choose what you want to do with it. I think white would be a very good, uh, not too distracting main color. You could also choose dark blue, but keep in mind that if you, for example, have 
green, orange, all kinds of colors that maybe would be a bit busy. Uh, but that is totally up to your taste, of course. Then if you watch Tony, your videos, Tony Lipsy from TL Yarncraft, you know that she also makes very fun temperature blankets and I have one for you here. This is the Linen Square Temperature Blanket and this is again very different. So I thought this one was really fun. Uh, I really like the stripes in the squares. It makes it interesting to make, I think. It keeps you engaged. It is not the same as a uh, back and forth row. For example, I'm someone that really likes variety and I like to change things up. And I think this would be something that would give the satisfaction of something different by changing, not changing rows, that's something that you do, of course, but like turning and just seeing the, the, the squares grow bigger. I think that's so fun and very unique. Yeah, I really like what Tony did with this one. Oh, and the pattern is for free, by the way. Then if you think about crochet, you maybe also think about granny square. So I also have a granny square blanket for you, of course. This is the granny square temperature blanket by Yarn Obsessions by Debbie. And what I really like is how she changed up the colors completely. She also talks about it in the Revelry page that she prefers blues and tans over all the, the funky colors. So this is what she did. And this is something you could definitely uh, do yourself too. Then a really, really fun blanket that I just realized is by the same uh, designer is this blanket. This is the hexagonal temperature blanket, also by Obsessions, Yarn Obsessions by Debbie. Um, again, something that is really interesting. Uh, you could change it up a lot with the colors. If you're more into the pink, uh, orangey, yellow kind of colors, you can really use it in this one uh, to make the flowers. Uh, again, a main color is used. I think the white fits it very nicely, but maybe uh, a very light pastel would be also really fun. You can really play around with it. And then last but not least, uh, I have one more pattern for you. This one is also super interesting. It is the Mildred Square Temperature Blanket by Kay Adolfson. Again, we already heard her again. Uh, that was fun. Um, this is so different too. I really wanted to look into patterns that are very different so I could give you some inspiration. Uh, you could do the straightforward blanket, absolutely, but I wanted to give you more options. So there are even more patterns in the uh, bio. I think about six more, I think. Just some different options. So take a look there if you're interested. But yeah, I wanted to close this one off with this blanket uh, because it, uh, it was very fun. Personally, these colors are not the colors that I would choose, but I think you can really look through it to see what would fit yourself. So I would think it would be really nice with uh, pastels. So white as a main color instead of black. Then maybe some very light greens, purples, blues. Um, lav lav lavender, yeah, that's purple actually. Um, what would be for oh, pinks also? I did I already say pink? Probably. You get the you get the idea. Some really nice pastels I think would be really really beautiful in this. So yeah, that was it. I hope you got inspired. Let me know if you're interested in making a blanket, a temperature blanket by now. Really let me know in the comments um, if you already made one. If you have some really good tips, please let them know because I think everyone that is watching would be interested in some be having some tips for these blankets. So uh, definitely share them in the comments and like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you like this kind of video and I see you in the next one. Bye creator!